Good morning. Um, my name is Vicky Bainson and I work for Pro Natura. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, two European projects uh, that we had about developing veterinary management skills and the certification scheme related to that. Um, the two projects started with the first one, which was called Vetri, and that was about creating a pan European training scheme to help improve skills and make that training material freely available. Um, the project ran from 2014 to 2016 and a three-day course was developed alongside a one-day course, so a, a basic level and then a more advanced level. And the more advanced level was focused on training trainers so that we could roll out a training scheme across Europe and that's translated into six languages and as I said is freely available the one-day course um, but as a consequence of that project people started to ask can we have an accreditation scheme so how do we prove to people that we have the skills that we require in order to prove to others example you know contractors and so on that they can prove that they have the skills that they need in order to manage veteran trees ultimately that's the objective so just briefly <coughs> on the Vetri project, the training material that's available is a, is a one day course, but also a number of videos. And those videos have been incredibly useful for us because it allows people to train in their own time. And particularly with the current climate, that's an extra advantage. So there were eight different videos produced, including things like how to clear around veteran trees, how to prune veteran trees, how to deal with old fruit trees, pollarding, uh, issues of risk and safety. So many of those uh, videos have been downloaded and watched across many countries and they've been used in their own right for training or as I said for people to do their own kind of training at home. So the Vet Cert project started in December 2016 and as I said it was building on the Vet Tree project which was the training focused project. Um, but this time we had 10 partners uh, from seven different countries, and these are all their logos here represented from Spain, from, uh, from France, from the Czech Republic, from Belgium, from the UK, Sweden, obviously. And we also had the European Arboricultural Council as a partner with a view to helping the long term sustainability of the certification scheme. And the project was funded, both projects were funded by Erasmus Plus, although Vet Tree was funded by what we call now, we used to call the Leonardo da Vinci project. So, as I said, to begin with, the uh, focus here was raising standards in veteran tree care across Europe. And that's always been the focus with regards to both Vet Tree and Vet Cert, because these are such precious trees that they need the best possible care and the best possible people to take care of them. So the objectives of the Vet Cert project was to recognise skills and knowledge in veteran tree management at two different levels. So the practising level for those actually climbing the trees and undertaking the work and a consulting level for those advising. And the other objective really was to increase opportunities for tree work professionals across Europe so that people could go and work in different countries, which we know from previous experience is a fantastic way to develop our knowledge and experience and to learn from one another. So what did the project involve? Well, first of all, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So we did a survey of existing certification and accreditation schemes in all of the partner countries and outside. Then the other part was to actually decide what knowledge and skills would be required of a person who is working on veteran trees. Then we identified where there were gaps in the training material. So for example, from Vetri, we had a whole range, as I've said, of training material available. But once we set the standards, it became clear that potentially there would be some gaps. And then the actual certification and examination procedure. And then finally, the most important part, I guess, once you've done a project like this, is ensuring it's sustainable in the long term. So to get the standard together, we first of all sent out a questionnaire uh, to all of our contacts and their contacts, contacts across 
all the countries in Europe that we could, um, that where we had that contact network. And the EAC obviously have an excellent network across Europe. We had almost 300 responses to that, which was really, really helpful. And this was asking, you know, what are the biggest issues? What do you see as the areas that are most important in your country for managing veteran trees? And as a consequence of that, a draft of the standard was produced and issued to all partners who then in turn talked to their key stakeholders regarding the content. And we had some excellent, really high quality feedback from that process. Then we locked ourselves in for a week in England, uh, all of the partners, and went through all of that feedback. Now, you can imagine it felt almost like a prison boot camp because there was so much to go through, so many different countries and cultures. And I think that's one of the things that I really, really enjoy about working on European projects is that people have such different backgrounds, experiences and cultures that we learn from one another. But sometimes it can also be challenging to find compromise and to find a way that everyone is comfortable with. So the feedback was collated, we worked through the standard in detail and we then sent it to be reviewed by Dr David Lonsdale who is a, um, a very experienced and knowledgeable arboriculturalist in the UK and researcher. So that was also very helpful ensuring we didn't write something that either wasn't correct or that it was understood as well because that's the key thing it's, it's very easy when you're all sitting in a room together to write a sentence but when someone independently reads through it to make sure it makes sense was important and they were finally produced in 2018 in the April and that felt like a huge milestone for the project because everything else that we were going to do after was based on those standards so the two levels are available on the VETSERT website. They were then translated um, into Spanish, Swedish, French, Czech and Dutch. Sadly, we don't have them in your language, but um, it's always possible to uh, have them translated if you want to and if you have the money to do so. We'd be very happy if that were the case. Uh, and the two levels, so the practicing level and the consulting level, cover largely the same topics, but at a deeper level of knowledge for the consulting level. Uh, there are about 12, there are 12 different units and at least two criteria within each of those units and up to 25. And the biggest one is obviously the one that's the topic of actual management. So I just thought I'd go through very briefly the different headings and topics that we cover in the standard. So these are the, the knowledge requirements that people will have to achieve if they want to be a VET cert certified contractor or consultant. So the recognition and the values of veteran trees, how they develop and age, the role of physiological function and dysfunction, roots, of course, which is always one of the most important areas. Veteran trees as ecosystems, so their biodiversity value, then their value for people, but also for cultural history. Then also how to survey trees and tree sites and not just individual trees. And that's the other thing about VETSERT is it's very broad, because if you're working with veteran trees, you have to understand that it's a broad area of expertise. Then obviously legislation and official guidance, and those have been modified for the relevant countries because obviously every country has different legislation. Then the issue of risk management, planning and urban development, and then veteran tree management in all its aspects. And as I said, that is the largest of the units, as you would expect. And finally, personal skills. And this was one of the units that we discussed a lot, uh, partly because many people in the project team felt that actually the biggest job we have to do as vet cert or as veteran tree managers is actually convince people of their value and therefore having those skills where you can talk to people and you can share the knowledge and share the wonder and the imagination with regards to why these trees are so important. So that that stayed with it. It, it came back and forth several times through the, the course of the project. So then the next step was, of course, to actually how do we assess people? So it's one thing that we have a standard, but how do we uh, 
actually make sure that people know or have this knowledge. So we worked very hard at an examination procedure and we tested one another. And I can say from my own experience that that was a very traumatic experience to stand there being examined by your peers, 10 people observing you and one person asking a question. And I was asked the first question, how would you describe a veteran tree, Vicky? And my brain just dried up. So I think that's... we. It was a fantastic experience from the point of view of when we've gone on to be examiners, we understand how nervous, nerve wracking it can be. But we examined one another in small groups, in large groups. We tested different types of, of examination procedure and then we collated feedback, both from the people observing, from the examiners and from the, the candidates, if you like, our guinea pigs. And then we did some amendments and modifications and we did another trial in March. Uh, a couple of months later and then in May we did an absolute full dress rehearsal in the UK where we actually had candidates from different countries and that was so so useful. Um, we had uh, people from the Netherlands, we had someone from Italy, uh, we had several different levels of people so people that come at veteran tree management from the arboricultural route but also people that come perhaps from the forestry side of things or the ecological side of things and and I'm an ecologist myself so I come at this from a different aspect and that was really really helpful for us to understand which level we should pitch the the appropriateness so whether where people pass the pass mark basically how well people need to do in order to pass so then after that we did the final revisions and then everything was translated and as you can imagine it's always a challenge with a European project when a product is finalised and translated and the people translating it suddenly read it in a lot more detail and identify potential issues. So that was also a relatively uh, long process, but still a very useful one. It's an extra quality control, actually, in, in these European projects. So for the practising level, candidates, as the consulting level, they must have a, a number of prerequisites before they can apply. The exam is one day long. And it includes some multiple choice questions and a written paper where they have to have uh, write some answers, some free text answers. And then there's some oral questions and outdoor exercises. So there's two key elements. We discussed long and hard whether or not we should have actually a climbing and cutting assessment as part of the exam for the practicing level. But for several reasons, including safety including the fact that if we have a candidate who actually isn't up to the standard do we really want them climbing our veteran trees and cutting them then also the fact of, of gaining permits and permissions accessibility to actually find the right trees that actually need cutting it just would have made the exams impossible to run so instead we do a simulation and that has proven to be actually very very useful and also possible to to run so the prerequisites are we do not want people doing vet cert who are just newly qualified. Our understanding is that you, you get your arboriculture qualification and then you need to climb trees. You need to work with trees to begin to understand the difference between managing and working on young and mature trees and managing and working on old trees. So we expect people to have five years experience. Now, they don't have to have five years experience of always working on veteran trees because there aren't people doing that. This is still a relatively small component of the work that people do. But five years experience of, of working with trees and also hopefully some experience of working with old trees in that time. And then we have different ways of coming in. So European tree worker is one, but given the variety and range of different types of qualifications across Europe, we have offered alternative options that people can prove they have equivalent certification or previous uh, qualifications. So then consulting level, the same applies. They need to meet the prerequisites before applying, also one day long, but it's a tougher day. There are three elements to the exam. There's a written paper, then there's an oral session outside, and then there is a practical exercise there. And then in addition, they have to undertake a tree management plan which has to be submitted as part of the exam. Again, prerequisites, we want people with experience um, and that they need to have proved to the VetCert Certification Centre that they have adequate 
qualifications and certificates and also suitable and relevant experience. So as I mentioned in the beginning, the standards as a process, we identified that there were a number of areas where there were gaps in the training material that we produced from VETRI. But not only that, we did a trawl from the new countries that were part of the VETSERT project to see if there was other training material available. And we came up with a series of, of a wish list, if you like, a menu of the different types of training material we wanted to add to the range we already had with the hope of helping support people get through VETSERT. So we took the three day course from VETRI and we have modified that and updated it into a two day course whereby the training trainer aspect uh, has been removed and we've added in some more advanced techniques. So that's now a two day course, which is more focused on actual the standard of VETSERP. It doesn't do and give you everything you need. You will have to do other reading and um do other sorts of training potentially to fill any gaps that you may have but it does give a good framework I think for those interested in becoming vet cert certified and we cover some of the topics like you know sustainability routing hollowing fungi and actually undertaking a survey and also producing a management plan and it's in a very open environment very interactive training course then we also have produced a number of fact sheets. So cabling, bracing and propping, our colleagues in the Czech Republic have a great deal of experience of this and they helped produce a fact sheet because it varies hugely ac across Europe. Then diagnostic tools, for example, there are lots of tools on the market, but we want a vet cert um, certified consultant to be able to understand where the flaws are in these different tools with regard to veteran tree management because they're not perfect and that's important then valuation systems for trees and also species associated we've also produced a number of case studies because i think the thing about managing veteran trees is there's not one size fits all it's often a challenge to find the right management option and there can be several so we brought together a range of case studies from as many countries across Europe as we could, whereby a story is told and the pros and cons and the possible alternatives that were discussed. And then uh, hopefully also what's happened and which choice was made. It's not always possible to have the results, of course, because these things take a long time. But it just gives people an idea of, of how things and how people are working with veteran trees in other countries. Then we produced an additional series of videos and one of the areas that was a real gap was our understanding of fungi and trees. So we uh, took on Lynn Body, Professor Lynn Body from Cardiff University, who's done a huge amount of work with decay and trees since the, the 80s. And she's done a number of short films for us regarding the relationships, the different relationships between trees and fungi, and also to try and kind of broaden our often over simplistic view of how trees and fungi relate to one another. In addition, we have another two short films on kind of slightly more non-conventional techniques that may be used or tried with managing veteran trees um, and then managing all pollards. And then finally, the management of veteran trees in urban areas. Now, I just want to show you a short amount of video from. I'm Lynn Boddy, Professor of Mycology at Cardiff University and I'm going to introduce you to fungi. Fungi are not plants, they're not animals, they're a kingdom of their own, a kingdom of around five million species. This vast kingdom is divided into several groupings, the most important of which from the point of view of trees and for wood decay are the Ascomycetes and the Basidiomycetes. The diversity of Basidiomycetes is huge. There are mushrooms, brackets, crusts, clubs, puffballs, jellies. They come in all sorts of colours, sizes and shapes. There are a wide range of ascomycetes too. But what are fungi? The fruit bodies are just the tip of the iceberg. The main part of the fungus, the business part of the fungus, is hidden within whatever the fungus is growing on. It's called the mycelium. The mycelium is a network of fine filaments called hyphae. They're microscopic, about 15 micrometers in diameter, so we can't see them with the naked eye. 
but en masse they are visible. So you can see them here on this petri dish of agar jelly. Sometimes hyphae aggregate together to form structures that look superficially a bit like roots. These include the rhizomorphs of honey fungus and mycelial cords seen here growing from colonised wood across the surface of soil in search of more wood. However, most saprotrophs are restricted to whatever it is they're growing in. Fungi mostly arrive at new resources as spores. These are produced in the fruit bodies and many millions are released. Most of them are deposited within a few metres of the fruit bodies, but occasionally they spread very much further, sometimes hundreds of kilometres. If conditions are suitable, spores will germinate and hyphae will emerge. Initially, hyphae branch in a haphazard way. Soon a more organised pattern emerges and hyphae no longer overlap and compete with each other. In fact, hyphae diverge and as the colony expands, side branches form and grow up rapidly to fill the gaps at the margin, so nutrient absorption is optimised. Fungi are not plants, they don't contain chlorophyll, so they can't fix carbon. They have to use dead organic matter. They do this by secreting enzymes which break down big molecules into small ones, and then they absorb those small molecules and use them for growth. All naturally produced organic molecules can be used by fungi as a whole, though different species have different abilities. They obtain their nutrition in different ways. Saprotrophs use dead organic matter. Necrotrophs kill, though there are very few killers of trees. Biotrophs, on the other hand, obtain their nutrition from living tissues. So you might think straight away, well, these must be parasites and doing harm to whatever it is they're growing on. And yes, some are. But others are mutualists and are essential for trees. These are the mycorrhizal fungi. So to sum up, mycelium is the key to the fungal lifestyle and fungi are key to healthy trees and healthy ecosystems. So as you can see, that's just an example of one of the films that we've produced. There is another one which specifically about mycorrhizae, which um, Lynn mentioned there, but also on heartwood and heartwood in oak, for example, heartwood decay. And these are areas that are really, really crucial to understand if you're managing veteran trees. So just um, a final few slides. The certification scheme is now available. Um, sadly, we have had some delays to the examinations that we've uh, put in place because of COVID, I'm sure that you're familiar with. Um, but just three weeks ago, two weeks ago, we had our, our first in Sweden, and that was great bo at both levels. And in Belgium, there were some course, some certification uh, exams last week. And in the UK, they're planning for the spring as well. So things are happening, although it's been a bit delayed. We were afraid that we we're going to lose the momentum, but it feels now like things are happening because actually given that an awful lot of this is done outside it's still possible to do it keeping social distancing measures in place and for an exam you want to have people far apart from one another so it actually works quite well. So the the EAC are responsible across Europe for the actual rollout of the scheme so they're the ones that are administrating in it on behalf of the VETSERT project um, and they are the ones issuing the cards and the certificates and keeping records of the people who are certified. So this is kind of how, how it works, how the a kind of a schematic picture of how it works. So we have what we call the managing body, which is the European Arboricultural Council. And they felt like the natural choice, given they have European tree worker and tree technician and have contacts in more than 20 countries in Europe. Then they have contact with what we call a VET cert certification centre. And then they run the assessments. They may also have training or that may be run by a different organisation. And then we also have a steering group. So that is made up of the original partners from the VETSERT project and they are involved in ensuring quality and also reviewing the standards. They will deal with any issues that arise with regards to, for example, new VETSERT certification centres. If, for example, you wanted to develop a VETSERT certification centre, then 
that's via the steering group that that process would take place. And the candidates contact a VECC or Vet Cert Certification Centre to sit an exam. And that's all available on the EAC and the Vet Cert website, those ones that are up and running. And these are the organisations that are currently Vet Cert Certification Centres. So we have Sveriges Arboristförbund in, in Sweden. We have the Asociación Española de Arboricultura in Spain. Arboristica Academy in the Czech Republic. Arboricultural Association in the UK and in Verde in Belgium. Now, one of the advantages that we saw with this constellation of partners is that we all have several languages, which allows us actually to uh, certify people in more countries than just our own. Uh, for example, in Verde, they can also work with the Netherlands and they also speak French. So they are able to run certification schemes in France and in the Netherlands and in Belgium. And for us in Sweden, obviously, we speak English, but we also can um, work with Norway and Denmark and, uh, and also Finland, actually, to some extent. So just to give you an example, we try to have partners and certification centers which can run courses or run certification exams in different countries than just their own. So from the candidate's point of view, their contact is with the Vet Cert Certification Centre and then they register themselves, they pay their fee, they may undertake some training and then they go through the examination and then the feedback, whether they passed or failed, goes back to the EAC and then they issue the certificates and the cards and keep the register online because that's something else that was important was that you if you're a, uh, an organisation want to employ a contractor, you're able to go into that website and see if a particular company or person is qualified. So the benefits. Why should an organisation employ a vet cert professional? Well, we hope that this means that you will have a much better chance of good quality work being carried out. And it's possible to set this as a requirement during the tendering process, which also makes it much easier to separate out those individuals who may may talk the talk but when it comes to it actually can't undertake the work or don't have the experience it allows easier competitiveness to be able to measure people against one another and it also allows organizations to measure value and cost in a different way and equally for those um contractors it allows them to prove that they actually do have these skills and knowledge that's not been possible for before so those contractors and consultants who've actually been very skilled and spent a lot of time training and developing themselves very knowledgeable and skilled have not been able to prove to a client that they actually have these skills and knowledge so that's all i wanted to tell you about the project and obviously we hope that this is something that's going to be rolled out in more countries across Europe in order to, in the long term, improve the care and management of our very, very special trees. So that just leaves questions, if you have any, and for me to say thank you very much for listening.